Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Break It Down. Let's break into the vault. I've got it. An incredibly complex mechanism seals the door standing impenetrably before you. Its gears, rods, and tumblers rival the innards of a construct for intricacy. With a confounded shake of the head, Aloth whistles. Examine the engravings. The sigil looks like a hand, but you don't recognize the significance. The hand of Colt, maybe? Examine the mechanism. This device seems the work of a madman. Some of the components seem thoroughly redundant, while others display dependencies and workings that are in turn dependent on them. No mere lock, this vault door presents a puzzle, a labyrinth for the mind. Pick the door. You stub your toe. Recite the incantation. The intricate mechanism seems almost to fade away, sinking into the door until it's entirely flat, mere shallow etchings. Only a lever remains, and pulling it sets the door in motion. We can trust nothing we see, and see nothing we trust. Well, does love their illusions. Sure. Hey, cool. The librarians don't mind. On it, not happening. Getting dizzy just looking at it. Okay. The Amoa shudders to a standing position. Fungus sheaths her features, and through the lichen and mold, you can make out deep gashes and mottled burns. She turns a cloudy eye upon you. The other dangles from its socket, thick mold growing around the nerves. Mara, what happened to you? Slayer. Destroyer. The Archmage's remaining eye focuses on you even as her muscles tense. The beginning of many a successful conversation. Sighing, Messina draws her weapon. The low gurgling roar, the creature turns on you. Gosh, okay. No. I'm Pick up Cena back here real quick and drop a moon well. Actually, let's go ahead and enhance this.
Don't that was about as useful as a bump on a pick. Okay, so it shoots in a pattern. I wasn't paying attention to it. No, it didn't work. So we can probably avoid the beams if I want to. Just make it a lot easier because they do a lot of damage. Let's go. So move her down. Yeah, just like that. The next one should be right here, I think. <laughs> Nothing a few fireballs can't take care of. There, go take care of the enchanted armor for me. right to the fireballs. That is a terrible idea. Oh, no. No good. Right, get back in there. Uh, we need to get her somewhere safe, I think. Get drop a heal right here. I don't know if it's going to be fast enough. Coming. We're almost through this. Yeah. At least the first part. We still have to go up here. Oh, nope. It came down here instead. Uh, that's a little problematic. So you finish this uh, tendril off. A gouging strike on all the new additions to the fight.
Okay, tendril down. Uh, let's get my main character over on Mara. More AOE stuff. Seen is in a fantastic position for it currently. Can I have Zodi use her crossbow and try to interrupt Mara? Gonna last. Get a moon well down. No, no good. I assume armor was the biggest threat. That's just these armors and librarians left. to poison so that doesn't work a uh, fireball will though that's not happen Lovely. confound it it usually works Try to get Al off the safety. That's it. Come 
Could heal out instead. gonna happen. I wanted to get her back. I was hoping she could tank one hit, and she could not. Harder. These guys are still standing. All right, I'll finish them off, please. Still standing. All right. One down. Hopefully, finish this one off with devastating blow. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. In your mind's eye, you make out the memory of the Archmage Mara at the bookshelves. The guttering vision pulls down tomes and scans them quickly before returning them to their places. The Kara, where is it? I've searched every other chamber in this godforsaken isle. The sacrifice must be here. She pulls down a scroll. I will find it. I will satisfy their god's damned device. It will grant me access to the body. And then... It's merely a matter of adapting the summoning. The foreign god will fall, crushed by Wal's hand, by mine. The Amoa Archmage's aura spikes with rage. And the pieces plunged into the depths. She stiffens, suddenly silent, and looks over her shoulder, past you. Who's there? Show yourself! She stands and straightens as a familiar masked figure steps out of the shadows. Hello again, Maura. We gotta say his name. Beyond Ledge? His voice lives from the darkness. The figures fade as the vision shimmers, breaks apart, and retreats from your sight. Oh? Maura's grasping belt. Grants animated, plus one enemies engaged. And Enchanted by Mara grants Mara's Writhing Tentacles. A spell we use pretty frequently, so we don't need to read it again. The known primarily for eccentric spells and attitude alike, the Amora Archmage Mara displayed equally unconventional taste in fashion. Her fellow masters of the mystic arts vied to avoid sitting next to her, as her robes, shawls, and stockings tended towards the inappropriately tactile. This belt is a shining example of her wardrobe, a band of some strange leather festooned in draping tendrils of unidentifiable hides and skins that twitch and writhe with every movement. Wearing it requires a certain comfort with persistent caresses, quite literally below the belt. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. Doesn't seem that great. I shall. Will do. Nope. Next time, I will secure a body that lasts. We've read all these books before, and on a brief glance, they don't look like they've been altered at all. This is new. The sacrifice of the eyeless face demands. The yellowing pages of this thick, locked tome are written in dark green ink. Within it you find mad poems, nonsensical formulae, and impossible sketches. On one page, you find the following scribed in blood. The Titan opens only for those who have undergone the mystery of the Trephine. Use of the Trephine requires understanding how the Trephine is used. This mystery cannot be taught, only experienced. A memory of a thing is not the thing itself. A memory of a thing is a thing itself. The Trephine demands the understanding of its use and sacrifice. Sacrifice the understanding you seek. I oh, see light coming in through here, so this must be where we need to go for Bacarna. This tome appears to be a record of secrets that followers of Wild have whispered to their god in strictest confidence. Who's writing them down? On it. A shaft of light breaks through the splintered roof of the Oratory of Wild to illuminate an empty pedestal. Though it's sometimes hard to tell in the Hall of the Unseen, it's daytime. Motes of dust hover in the glow of the sun. Wave your hand in the light. The skin of your palm prickles with comforting warmth. Place Picarna's grimoire in the light. The light shines down on a blank parchment and dim runes. Nothing else happens. You have only delayed your death. I've got it. Alright, new description here. Though it's sometimes hard to tell in the Hall of the Unseen, it's nighttime. The beam is tinged with silver from the glow of distant stars. Place Picarna's Grimoire in the light. You rest the book on the pedestal, bathing its cover and binding in cool starlight. Picarna's Grimoire twitches with anxious, pent-up energy. The book snaps open, its pages suddenly laid bare to the starry sky. Blank parchment filled it with text as if by an unseen hand, and runes once faded flare to brilliance. The grimoire pulses with energy before going still, its pages ruffled by an ethereal breeze. Carnage Celestial Grimoire Exposure to starlight has restored the runes and writing of this grimoire, although a complex cipher leaves most of it illegible. A book plate in the cover contains a short message. If lost, please return to Bacarna for a modest reward. Agrasima. Oh, there's a bookshelf. Okay, we read this first. Look at that later. Memoirs of Helder. The pages of this tome overflow with El de Deren inscribed in a spidery hand. They tell of Helder, a leader of the Hand Occult several centuries past. Though much of it is difficult to read, much less interpret, the end details a ritual aimed at achieving complete communion with the obscured. The memoir suggests that in order to become one with while, an individual must entirely erase themselves from history. To exist obscured is to never have existed at all, not even in writing.
Okay. Speak nothing of weak held her. She saw without being seen. She listened without being heard. Touched without being felt. Speak nothing of weak held her, who would never speak of you. Speak nothing of weak held her, her name false but title true. Speak nothing of weak held her, for she was entrusted with her father's work. And muddling bolts. 25% chance on scoring hit to imply confused to the target for 8 seconds. Hi. Yeah? I shall. Okay, uh, before we go and open up the door, because we have the second key that we need, I assume. Let's go speak to the Archmage. Watcher, you remember why we started traveling together? Just seems to have. Uh, Are you one to talk? For me, it was mind. always about Maura. The fringe benefits were secondary, at best. Okay, never mind. They're right here. Yet the deeper we delve into the Halls Obscured, the more your motives unravel. Better break this up. It can only get ugly. Uglier. Am I interrupting? Tane, I believe you were about to call me irresponsible, or was it greedy? Remind me. Oh, we didn't find her other books. I came here to pull Maura, our friend, out of a bad situation. At first, I assumed that you had showed up for the same reason, but I won't make that mistake again. Now I know better. You're just as petty and self-interested as anyone in the circle. Your sudden sanctimony is curious. We still don't know what's happened to Maura, but you seem more interested in the halls than you are in her fate. Unless rescuing Maura was never your goal. Perhaps your motives and hers are more closely aligned than you led me and the Watcher to believe. Is anyone going to clue me in? Apologies, Watcher. These are circle problems. And they'll be kept between circle wizards for the moment. Ain't should take a glance at Lengroth. You should have gotten the lay of the land by now. Any news on Maura? Maura was killed and infested with spores. Damn it. From what we've seen of this place, I suppose that shouldn't be surprising. I pray her return to the wheel was swift, at least. But, gods, what a miserable way to end one's life. Lengroth's usual stoicism falters for a moment as she turns away, a frown of deep concern etched into her face. How could this have happened? I suspect a man named... Fionlesh may have been behind it. Fionlesh? Is this another agent of Wal? He's working against Wal, not for them. I don't actually know if that's the case. I don't know what his intentions are, but he wants to get inside Wal's body. Len, we should invite him into the circle. It's lonely being the only free thinker with bold, terrible ideas. This is really not the time, Tane. Whatever this Fionlege wants, his intentions aren't good. We cannot allow Wal's Titan body to live. It's simply too dangerous a temptation. We must destroy it. The only thing you'd be destroying is opportunity. Did it never occur to you that maybe Wal wanted his body to be found so that it could help those of us with the imagination to use it? Yeah, but the gods suck, so I say destroy it. As cruel as this sanctum can be, I have a soft spot for that old bucket of eyeballs. I wouldn't want to disappoint our host by leaving empty-handed. Well, I'm the one risking my skin. I'm the one who gets to decide. Len, it sounds like the Watcher has heard enough from you and me. We'd only hurt our cause by pressing the matter. He very slowly and very obviously mouths the words, Wake up wild to you. Lengrath sighs and shakes her head. Don't let Tane manipulate you to further his own impulsive, foolishly optimistic ends. Foolish optimism has never failed me in the past. At least my plan keeps things interesting. My plan keeps us alive. 
Good point. Oh, we do have four, so yeah, we're only missing one of them. I wonder if it's here. The lectern of obfuscation stands empty before you. Place the memoirs of Helder on the lectern. Light shimmers down upon the tome, and the words of weak Helder melt away. When the wheel has ground you all to dust, only I will remain. Might be pronounced Wake Helder, but the Y in Adirin is like an E sound. I don't remember if the YC makes a unique sound or not in Adirin. Hey, uh, the Weak's Oracular Focus. It's a small shield, legendary channeled shield. After empowering an ability, gain plus five deflection for 20 seconds, and enlarged shield grants enlarged shield. The water overcharges the focus, increasing the radius of the shield and granting a deflection bonus to other nearby allies. Fashioned in the likeness of an alien creature of writhing tentacles and bulbous eyes, this focus was crafted by the Weak Helder, one of the founding members of the Hand of Cult, by their own histories anyway. The focus draws on the soul of the wielder to project a thin layer of defensive energy. While far from solid enough to actually halt a strong blow, the shield can deflect projectiles and weapons, preventing them from striking true. Then strengthened and large shield. The deflection granted to allies is increased. I think from 8 to 12, right? Yeah. Buried in large shield. Allies now gain a bonus to all defenses instead of deflection. Greater channeled shield. After empowering an ability, gain plus 10 deflection for 20 seconds, so it doubles the effect. And lasting channeled shield. After empowering an ability, gain plus 5 deflection until the end of combat. I'd argue that's a little better. What does he currently have equipped? I think this is better. Well, that's a little specific. I thought I... Did this before. Well, it might be worth using. Then he has the entire week set. Robes, the wand, and the shield. How may I help? I shall. Alright, so we missed one of Lengroth's books somewhere. Unless it's beyond this point. So next time we might have to go around and see if we can't find it before we progress too far. But for now, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.